So anyway, when I first came into the space, I was trying to work out some narrative in relationship to the two areas. Um, one which is a tall, narrow, fairly lengthy area, and a smaller area which is um, a more narrow, tall, d more defined space. Um, and in here, I was going to hang some objects from the ceiling which can be viewed from both the ground and from, um, from the ground and from the first floor so that you can look at the objects from below and also from the first floor and they will have a slightly more figurative reference point to them. And in the um, main area, again, have a series of objects moving underneath the eye beams and then from the horizontal beams which run across and also using the length of the building um, to set up some directional movement within the space as well as vertical movement going up and down. And using this area here as a main focus, um, not as a main focus, but as a more of a sort of clearly defined picture. Um, from that, and where I usually start working in the space, I take, um, it's a mixture of taking photographs and then drawings on top of photographs. Um, and then followed by um, two days sitting in the space doing drawings of the areas, looking, um, trying to work out sort of specific details of size of pillars, eye beams, and what the walls are made out of, so that when I'm um, installing stuff, especially if it's involved in a lot of various hanging objects, I sort of can tell um, the direction and movement within the space. The work I do on the whole is very site specific and I like relating to the space and how the space functions and what sort of elements are in the space. I sort of went round about the system a bit. So the sort of I mean, you know, one can weld and one can do, you know, all of that stuff I'm fine on. And I'm, I'm much more of a constructor of objects rather than a deconstructor, deconstructor of a form, i.e. like a stone or, or wood. That then led on to working more with dance and theatre companies, which in a way is sort of a combination of um, dealing with a space, dealing with a form of narrative, dealing with a whole lot of constraints depending on you know, what the dance company is or what the theatre piece is and also what the sort of technical limitations of the space is. The element of sound is often by chance, but I actually really like using it. And I'm not a musician, even though I really like music. Um, so it's, there's often sound which goes from the whirring of motors, or organ pipe sounding, or Billy cues hitting metal rods, or um, tubers being played by also hair dryers, or drums being hit. And so in a way, it's sort of by chance, but at the same time, I don't not use it and I, it's in the back of my head when I'm, use, when I'm sort of making the piece. I think it sort of starts to set up another um, uh, resonance to the space itself. It's not like I set up to set up a rhythm of the space, but I allow certain sounds to occur. And certainly there's a certain rhythm which sort of occurs bar motors going round. I think I'm always fascinated. I love the science museum, and I like sort of working out how things work. And I mean, obviously, to a certain degree, there's a lot of stuff you just have no idea about. I mean, you know, sort of rockets to the moon. I mean, they're great machines, but I have no idea actually how physically, you know, I mean, beyond the basic how they work. But I like sort of working out how things get from A to B and what drives them, I suppose, or you know, what, how that works. Um, and also to a certain degree what um, 
It's something to do with you know, how gravity works or how balance works. So there's a lot about balance, a lot about gravity, and a lot about things moving in ways which are slightly, which mirrors human actions, but is not done by humans. And um, I suppose, if anything, in sort of filmic references would be um, My American Uncle by, Mr. Um, by Jack Tatty or you know, Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. I'm not sure why the underwater um, reference points occur. I think it's also, I, mean, I think it's because there's a, um, you know, if you're swimming or, you know, in water, there's a certain floating aspect where gravity or the effect of gravity is not so strong, obviously. Um, and so when objects are floating, there's a sort, they either are gliding or flying or they could be underwater. And I think when you see things moving slowly, in a slightly, in, without gravity, then the, the underwater aspect occurs, or the references occur. Um, they contain a series of nets which have various sort of hanging objects underneath them. And one set of objects um, are wooden spoons, which sort of have a, a slight udder-like feel and slight underwater marine aspect to them. And the actual spoons were influenced by a 1600s dance costume for, um, based on some piece of music, which I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been a handle piece anyway. And it was a sailor boy's costume covered with spoons. And then I got into thinking about the wooden spoons and then I thought, well, um, put them underneath because there's something sort of fairly domestic about them and then spoons are shovels or movers from A to B and then they were sort of absurdly sort of moving up and down underneath these latex sacks or knitted sacks or nets. The audience in a number of different cases um, had been able to phys physically, beyond moving around bar motion detectors, um, to trigger things. Um, the work's relationship to the space also, in a way, is, all, is, is audience interactive, um, which is either by, all, by motion detectors or by people being able to move things, which then trigger off a series of actions. And I think as a, as a kid and as now, if I go into like science museums, I like pushing and pulling buttons and knobs and seeing how things work. So, um, and the sort of hands-off art approach is I'm not that keen on, or maybe I've got a habit of always touching things or trying to work things out. So, um, the, the fact that the audience is actually part of the piece in a certain way, even if maybe they don't know it to begin with, but then can realize that this actually, by them moving around the space, it means that um, a series of other actions occur. The audience is then part of the narrative, part of the, part of the space and part of the objects in a way. I think there's usually an element which is a little absurd in the work. I mean, there's a sort of seriousness which is there and there's a sort of slightly comic aspect which is there. So things which are sort of, you don't think should be happening, happen and then things which you think should happen don't happen. So it's a little bit sort of comedy and tragedy thrown in together. The use of windows has been, in some form or other, a fairly consistent um, metaphor, I suppose, for the last few, four, four or five years. And there's something between interior, exterior, you know, eyes are supposed to be, you know, windows to the soul, 
you know, in a metaphorically wise, it's that sort of line between one, one place and another place, which is an interesting divide and what is seen. And whether you look through a window, and if you're walking down the street, do you look into people's windows or don't you look into people's windows? And again, in you know, most European um, towns um, where the streets are narrow, there's a certain dialogue which can occur between you know, one building on one side of the street and another building on another side of the street. Um, and, and I lived in row houses, you know, sort of apart during, as a kid and then later on, where, again, you know, you see sort of, you know, you've got windows in between your backyard over to the, you know, the neighbor's backyard or whatever. So there's some, so, something sort of, um, um, you're sort of voyeuristic about, about that and those choices you make. So I sort of like the windows on that level. And usually with the windows, it's, um, there's sometimes things happening behind them. Use a wide range of materials, and I, I've, I'm a fairly good scavenger, and also um, I tend not to throw anything away, which means that either people give me stuff, um, or I find things, or, you know, I, I'm a good finder of things, I mean, to, which is disastrous, because I've now got sort of tons of junk, basically. So, um, and the range of materials in, you know, in a Pacific exhibition really depends on what I'm doing at the time, which sometimes means that you use stuff which you wouldn't necessarily use um, if you had a, a choice. And, and it sometimes then leads you on to, to other things. Plans at the moment seem to be you know, a mixture of still working, I mean, continuing to work with the theatre companies, and also I'm still working with a dance company, Creech, Creech Cast Company, which I've been working for, with since 89. So those things are sort of ongoing, and, you know, depending on what sort of interests me and what comes up, I'm, I'm really, you know, I sort of don't say no, and then wonder why I get myself into a muddle time-wise.